No, no, you were not. No, okay. No, you, j just, just the March 13th is that's the one you, okay. you needed to sign off on. Let me finish up on this one. Okay. You guys can start. My mic's not working back here. Oh, okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. This is the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals uh, for July 10th, 2019. Uh, we have uh, two sets of minutes uh, to approve, and then we'll be uh, moving into 58 Northfield. Um, I'm, I've read it. I'm good. You, you're all good? Uh-huh. Um, I move that uh, we, uh, we approve the March 13th, 2019 minutes uh, uh, as corrected. All in favor? And this is, this relates to me, Mr. Gombos, and Mr. Moss. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Uh, that, that, that passes. And the second is uh, the minutes of June 12th. Uh, and that is me, Mr. Gutman, and Mr. Capasso. Um, is that uh, approved as uh, with corrections? Yes. Approved. Thanks. Did you pass the corrected uh, Here, one of the 12? The and, and this one. Uh, down to Ed, and he can pass them on to Liz so that we keep ourselves straight. Um, so we move on to the uh, first item on our agenda is uh, 58 Northfield Avenue, and that's a public hearing for plans to legalize an additional dwelling unit to a home located at 58 Northfield Avenue. The proposed plans are for a two-family home on a 1,250-square-foot lot. The OF6 zone uh, only allows one-family dwellings and therefore a use variance for two family dwellings is required. Uh, who will speak on this application? Good evening, Paul Petraeus, the Zoning Board of Appeals. Representing the applicant, and maybe I should go to the white board first. So this is an application for a home located on Northfield Avenue by the intersection of Lincoln Avenue. It's odd one house because I live in the neighborhood. It's always been a used as a two family. And uh, so the, the number two and the Ed Brown are so big to see the homes are in the two family. And uh, uh, it's interesting to note that the property card in 1962 identified the use as a two family. So it's been kind of distributed to two family dwellings. So the tax uh, assessor. Just for clarification. And uh, so I suppose a couple of things could be done with this piece of property, okay, but we would like to keep it as a two family. We have no intention of subdividing, but it would not be possible to subdivide. And uh, we laid it out such that uh, there's parking out here right now, so it's putting it for. Could you tell us what the inside of the house looks like currently? Because the um, uh, uh, what's on the uh, West uh, uh, the Greenberg website identifies this as a one-family home in a one-family zone. Yeah. Well, the basement is all is all there, and uh, so obviously the first floor is isolated from the rest. So you have a baby or girl here. Thank you. 
did that, then you, you would probably have you know, fraud goes back to the energy market. So I think if you do good applications, you could end up with people like that. Um, the, you understand this is a use variance, and the criteria for a use variance are reasonably stringent. Um, and um, it's not like a typical application before this board where we have a lot of discretion, where we can do a balancing act. Mm -hmm. We don't have that discretion here. Uh, you know, you have to show us why this makes sense, really, according to the, is it the auto provisions? Mm -hmm. In terms of all three? There, there are three or four different criteria that have to be satisfied, um, finances being one of them. It's a hardship. You have to prove why there's a hardship, and that hardship can't be overcome, but without the variance. So, yeah. and part of that, the other part of that criteria is unusual circumstances. Yeah. Is there something unique about this property? that should permit it to have a different set of, of conditions for its use in that single family zone than all the other properties. I know when I visit that section of Northfield, you've got a variety of houses on a variety of lot sizes. So if you make this a two family house, why shouldn't every other house be allowed to be a two family house? What's unique about this property that would make it acceptable to, as one of the criteria, to make this a two-family house and not the house across the street, the house adjacent, you know, which are all, again, very unique houses, very unique property sizes throughout the area. Why, this, why should this one be singled out differently? Yeah, because, you know, uh, in an application like this, you're asking for what amounts to spot zoning, which is discouraged. We have zoning codes and zoning districts and uh, you know, if there's really a need uh, or, uh, uh, to correct these things, you know, that should be done through a different process as opposed to this board saying, oh, this is unique. You know, this should be different. You know, unless you can tell us how that is, we have a, we have a problem. So without delving into the finances, because I didn't look at this, I would say that in principle, well, you, you need to address all three. So if you, if you want to address them, you know, we can adjourn until, uh, you know, until you're ready to proceed with the application. You know, but it, it makes little sense to, to hear it now and to hear it again. No, uh, if it, if I wouldn't want to do it that way. What I want to say is right now, the full one is 50 square, 12,000 square foot block. It's not going to be constructive for the neighbor that you're talking about for it to become known that he or she or both are operating a two-family house in a one-family zone. It means that they are doing something that's not permitted. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> well, so listen, I mean, the one next to me is on a small lot, okay, and it's been a two-family since 1952. So, and, and I understand what you're saying, but it is a one. Certainly, a lot larger. I'm pretty sure you all know Northfield Avenue. Yeah. Okay, sure. and just come up Northfield Avenue. It was a vintage home, you know, going back to the 1800s. Okay, coming up the road, and most of them are on 50 foot lots. And this, for some reason, this man decided to build this house in 1950 on a spot lot. Could I uh, give some background? Sure. So, I live in this neighborhood also and I've known this house forever. The, the father of the current owner built it. The reason it wasn't grandfathered in as a two-family because it was used at that time as a mother-daughter and then later became a two-family. 
The two adjacent properties are both two family. The one behind it and the one to the left, to the right, is the street that separates my house from theirs. Legal two family. Yes, grandfathered in because they were two family at the time the zoning was established. There is in that group, just if you stand in the front yard of that house, you can probably see about a half a dozen two families that are legal without without moving. Mm -hmm. The previous building inspector was aware that it was being used as a two family, allowed building permits that removed a staircase in between and created a kitchen in the basement or, or legalized the kitchen in the basement without ever addressing the use of it. But he knew it was happening. He allowed building permits to configure it that way. The lot size, when you get up to uh, past Sand Rock, then it becomes another zone. It's OF5 up there, so you require a larger lot. But in, in the bottom half of Northfield, the OF6, this is the largest existing lot there. It, if you were to subdivide it into, it still would have a quarter more on each lot than would be required. So if the variance were granted with the stipulation that this lot not be allowed to be subdivided while this two family uh, use exists, then it's better than subdividing, as Paul said, into and building two new houses, which would be a hardship to the owner to tear down a beautiful existing house to build two new ones. Uh, granted, it's probably a self-imposed hardship. Is there enough critical mass in that area in terms of homes to just to to rezone it and make a series, you know, a, a small enclave? I, I don't believe so because you know when we created that zone, we're looking for a certain density. There were houses on the minimum size lot that were just grandfathered in as two families because they were existing that way, and those are a problem. This one is doesn't increase the density because of the oversized lot and it now has two off street parking spaces that are predominantly on the village right of way mr petretti's plan that will go before the the planning board if it passes by you would move those in onto the property and double the amount of parking to give the four off street for two two families this was, mean, not, two, one family. this was not grandfathered in as a two-family because it wasn't technically at that time. At that time, it was used as, as a mother-daughter. Mother there was two apartments, mm -hmm. but the sisters inherited from the father, and they were both living there at the time. So they lived separately, but it was family, so they didn't need mm -hmm. that, bar that grandfather. I guess they never thought they would need it. Interesting. I, I guess... I, I guess I would like to see a map yeah. of, of places that are grandfathered. I think, there's, I think there's a whole argument that you just made on his behalf and that he needs to make. <laughs> right. Um, well, in a, in a, yeah, but we can't take it conceptually. We need, we need some hard evidence and, and, you know, and where these lots are. And, 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 and I think we also, no matter what the map shows, I think we do have to hear about some numbers that would show us that um, you can't, th that it's impractical financially to, for it to be used in the way that it's zoned to be used. So, uh, Understood, but I, I just want to say that, you know, uh, somebody could buy a house and knock it down and put two houses up together. Yes. You have a configuration where you have, you know, right where it's back and back and forth and all that. If this house was built, There's a lot of traffic. So the farmer that built the house said, look, if I can complete the fence and make sure the car doesn't get to the beach and get to the yard, I can look at the economics of it. It's real simple. It's going to uh, <coughs> have this water field there. But then the coverage is, is real slim. And they like it with the four percent coverage. But then this is even with the driveway where the fish ponds are where they belong to where it should be, okay, it's it substantially less than fifty four percent. So the supporting that this kind of house in this kind of an area up there really needs to be second to third rental up there to sustain the family. So I just thought that he would make a really good point. But, you know, unfortunately, it's just more than 50% up there. But uh, 
understand your point. I understand that from an aesthetic, from a, maybe a neighborhood perspective, if you're looking at this house in isolation, a two-family single house on that large property is probably preferable to a two, two single houses on smaller lots. But we have to, unfortunately, we can't decide it that way. We have to decide it according to a series of uh, provisions that, will, that have been established by courts. So we need, if it's going to be approved, we need to have uh, the argument based on the court criteria. You know, and, and one, you know, one of which is the character of the neighborhood. You know, and it will serve your case to present information of which houses really are two family and have been grandfathered in, and where they are relative to this. this and the this lot house. size of yeah. those houses. And it's yeah. I, the reason I asked about the other property. And these things are all online. Yeah, it's all online. Uh, the reason I asked about the other property, the other properties, and the history of it is that you know we can't do what legislation should right. could do. Exactly. Right. And and it might, um, you know, it might be potentially worth just pursuing a rezoning of this small enclave in some way, uh, as opposed to us doing it. You know, it's a exactly. Sure. It's a it's a line to be. We got to be careful. And the question is, yeah. is you know, if you drive up Northfield off of Ashford, is it the character of the streets changes as you get yes. closer, farther away from Ashford? The question is, are all of the two families clustered in the more distant end, or are they scattered throughout the, the zone? Right. So, because again, if, if you do make it legislatively, you can work with one, you can't work with the other scenario. Right. And we don't know what the scenario is. Right. Right, and I was also intrigued by that about about the, the issue of you can make a decision that in and of itself won't change the character of the neighborhood, but it does it set a precedent yes. that will eventually exactly. lead to a a, 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 a a change in character of the overall neighborhood. Exactly. So um, it's a little bit of a sticky wicket. So <laughs> I suggest you read it as well and. You know, and this is this is a case where where we'll need documents, not uh, not just yeah. a, a a speech. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah. and and precedent doesn't necessarily count just because it's been that way for a long, long time isn't enough for us to make that decision. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we we uh, we don't meet in August, so um, we'll, you can work with. Uh, Building inspector to uh, get back on our calendar whenever you're ready. And, and does anything have to be done as far as noticing uh, notice to neighbors? Uh, I don't think that so. was that was done. Yeah, so the, the, sign, the sign is up. Yeah, you yeah. know, and just keep uh, keep the sign up if you would. And the yeah. neighbors were noticed by certified mail. Mm -hmm. I received one myself. Right. <laughs> are, are you here to speak no. on? No. Okay. That's this is Dan Romer, assistant right. building inspector. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so uh, I move to uh, carry the uh, the application over to uh, until the applicant is ready and uh, move to close the meeting. All in favor? So moved, and it is.